Can you not actually be killed, James? No. No. <laughs> boss doesn't do any damage. Wait, it's five dollars. He's just swimming around. <laughs> <laughs>
So the sad story of a fish that never was. And I do generally feel bad for the devs here. They probably had some really good ideas. They probably thought it was going to be cool. And it's just not worked. So it's unfortunate. But let's move on to something better then, which was Zakul Harbinger of Nialotha. Uh, so this is the penultimate boss. This is the one you, that you'll have to fight before Queen Ashara. Very similar to Mithrax, actually. Same style, same thing. They've made this fight considerably better. Much more visual, which was one of my criticisms of Heroic, where it's moving from realm to realm. It's now way, way more obvious what's happening. Nice addition of some stuff in Mithrax such as way more tentacles again though they've made it a little bit less punishing than you would expect such as the tentacles there are a lot more tentacles that shoot across the room they don't one shot you i would expect on mythic this would to be a straight one shot it's not you can get hit by them and it's fine so if you have a momentary lack of uh, concentration then it doesn't really matter that much you can be saved quite easily by the healers uh so that's something that i found interesting uh, oh, not only that, though, this boss does seem to push people towards class stacking. Oh, I will say it doesn't seem particularly difficult. Um, is that the biggest and most scary aspect of this fight, as it was in Heroic, is this ability called Dread. Dread is a fear debuff that is put out on four to five players in Mythic. And it needs to be staggered uh, in terms of removing it. So you want to dispel some of them. Then you want to let some of them time out. Because it does absurd amounts of raid damage. Like absolutely criminal amounts of raid damage. So you kind of want to dispel a couple. Heal up. Dispel a third one. Heal up. And then you've got a very small window to do this. So I was quite interested playing a healer last night. Because it was quite nice to time everything. And deal with the new healing essences to try and counter a lot of this stuff. Unfortunately, though, this, what this does is it heavily favors stacking Discipline Priests, like, of, above anything else whatsoever, because it really is the main source of damage in the fight. So, you, we mean, we, four Disc Priests is a really good idea here. It's very, very heavy, very predictable damage, which Disc Priests do with really well. Not only can they spam shield people, knowing that damage is coming in, but they can also ramp up to do massive amounts of healing in a short window, which is exactly what you're dealing with here. So this fight really pushes a lot of the other healers out. I felt I was just top, I was basically there to top the raid for the little straggles that were left after the disc priest hadn't prevented damage. But not only that, this dread debuff, which does appear to be pretty much the most difficult part of the fight, um, is immunable by warriors because it doesn't come in often enough to beat the cooldown of berserker rage which means that this fight also heavily favors stacking dps warriors which are also doing insane amounts of damage in the eternal palace so what we might see is a lot of warriors and a lot of guilds gearing their warriors right now after having seen this because they seem fundamentally great in nearly all encounters so a big bonus to the melee there if that is the case but overall a really fun fight i liked it it was much more visual much more engaging uh i thought this was a good fun fight i really did and the final fight we tested was Argozoa, which is one of my favorite bosses that we got to test on heroic and mythic did not disappoint far more intense i like the idea this fight deals with soft and rages regularly so a soft and rage if you don't know is the idea that the boss won't go big and red and just kill everybody, but the hits mechanics itself will get to a point where it's unmanageable. So that is the soft enrage. You have to beat it before this mechanic beats you because it is going to beat you. And in this case, it's the debuff that is thrown around on players, which then copies itself to other players. So it escalates quite quickly. So you'll get two at the start, then four, then eight, and then it very quickly spreads after that. And you have to get the boss out of that phase until then. They've made some nice corrections to this fight as well by including hidden walls uh, in order to prevent you from just pulling the boss out of his arena into somewhere else, which is what we could do on Heroic. Uh, and also they've made it... Um, they've made it so it instantly resets should you try and get it out of the room we did test it and you, if as soon as he leaves his room if he's not ready to go into his next phase then he will just instantly reset which is great to see because this fight had a lot of cheese potential although they have for some reason left in the ability to skip the gauntlet phase so the idea is that at a certain percentage the boss will go from upstairs to downstairs uh, and you have to run a gauntlet now they seem to have let that maintain for some reason um I don't know. Uh, I, that's something I hoped would be removed. They obviously want the gauntlet to be a part of the fight. Uh, but I will say I didn't get to test the gauntlet. Some people did and said it was working. So maybe there is something I'm missing there. So I will point that out. So those are the bosses. This was a lot of fun as well. Uh, those are the bosses. And I didn't get to test the other ones. They have been tested. But the guys gave me good feedback on those bosses. So what's my thoughts here coming into the Mythic Eternal Palace? Because Heroic was such a, mi a mixed bag of terrible bosses. And some okay ones. And nothing that really stood out as being amazing i will say this first of all this raid on mythic seems pretty easy uh certainly easier than what we've seen in the past that i could have 
and usually we were pretty correct on this, besides Jade Fire Masters, I think, uh, able to spot the bosses which are likely to be a big problem on Mythic. Like, you can already see the escalation that would happen on Mythic, and you go, well, this on Mythic, this is going to be crazy. Um, Lady Ashvane seems to be going that way a little bit. Orgozoa, maybe. Uh, but that's about it for what we've seen so far. Everything else actually seems totally fine and relatively killable we're talking about relatively killable during testing within the hour they gave us for a lot of these bosses that's not something we expect to see for um for reference uh, looking at something like uldia we killed talok on mythic during testing which was the first boss which isn't that unexpected but nothing else uh really nothing else fetid we weren't getting anywhere on the mythic testing mithrax okay um you know zul nowhere even close trying to manage those ads before the rogue strategy was discovered and so, similar with zek boss was okay but certainly within the hour of testing we weren't anywhere near killing the bosses this time around though we felt very comfortable that we would have killed uh, any bosses we didn't kill we would have killed very very soon it does feel a little on the easier side now puts me in a bit of an awkward spot because i not get excited about looking forward to a relatively easy instance should it remain that way i will point out here again and if everything is subject to change they could just buff the whole instance um but i do think mythic should be more accessible my issue is my pessimism kicks in here um is that i'm not totally against an easier mythic raid i think it does need to be a bit more accessible to get those heroic guilds that just don't bother with mythic because they see how difficult it can be certainly off the back of crucible of storms where we know uh, so many guilds just aren't even trying it because it's so hard i'm fortunate fortunate enough to have been in a guild that did kill that boss um but there are a lot of guilds out there that just aren't bothering with the crucible storms because the loot's not worth it and it's just a prestige fight and it's also incredibly difficult uh and it's just no benefit to the guys like in terms of long term so they're not bothering with it so i'm okay with heroic guilds that typically are good enough uh, or just don't want to invest all that time to move up into her a mythic and to start farming those 20 man raids instead of being like 15 guys getting the extra guys in and having a more consistent core of players i like the idea of that but i would also like to heroic to become somewhat more difficult so it's not too similar to normal it needs to work on both sides for me um but my other pessimistic thought here uh, or the big pessimistic thought is that this raid tier potentially is going to come down to a one boss instance in terms of mythic guilds which is just queen ashara and i really don't want that to happen again like it did in battle for dazara law like it somewhat did in Uldia. it's i mean we we definitely battle for dazara law was the biggest example of it like crucible of storms is hard for both bosses uh but what we saw in battle for dazara law is crush boss crush boss crush boss crush boss and then 500 600 pulls on one boss randomly in the instance instead of a linear scaling up in difficulty which is what so is something we're used to seeing you would see that in things like argus you would see that in things like nighthold and tomb of sargeras there is nobody there's no instance that really just came down to a one boss race even if the last boss was incredibly difficult like kill jaden there was plenty of work to be done on fallen avatar and mistress Zazine and maiden and all those kinds of things before that point they weren't something you were expecting to kill in your first few days um i hope that doesn't happen i really hope that doesn't happen there are some potentially difficult bosses here like lady ashvane orgozoa maybe um i don't think Zakul cool is going to be that hard either like we were very comfortable with the fight once we got the sort of swing of what was happening we were definitely well into the last phase and on our way to a kill and we're actually more talking about who would we min max for this fight in in, in order to gain the damage buff that that fight has on offer and make sense of it that's my fear going into this. This might be a rather short-lived raid. Um, some thoughts on that going a bit deeper, but this is obviously tinfoil hat times. Um, is this? I don't. I'm not sure. Blizzard's kind of happy with this raid. It's a very mixed bag, and it feels like the old deer team. And we've talked about this a number of times. Is the idea that certain projects are handed off to different teams? So we had feedback that the um crucible of storms was pretty much handed off to a one guy team who came up with the crucible of storms and used all the tools at his disposal and came up with something i think is pretty cool i like the crucible of storms i think it was a good raid um for what it was it was not designed for everybody it was designed to challenge the top of the top who had already beaten Jaina, which is still very few people it was designed for a very niche crowd and i think they hit the nail on the head there although it does seem to have gone a little too far even after nerfs with people not wanting to do it all was a mixed bag 
Battle for Dazzler Allure is overall a really good raid. Really interesting mechanics. Lots of fun. I still like doing Battle for Dazzler Allure, even on farm. I have fun uh, in there. I didn't have fun farming Uldia. I got very tedious. I got very bored and I thought I found the dungeon to be rather tedious after its first couple of kills. And this seems to have like reverted back. So it's like Team 1 did Uldia. Team 2 did Battle for Dazzler Allure. Team 1 then came and did the Eternal Palace. And I don't think it's kind of paid off. I don't think it's paid off. I don't think they got the balancing quite right yet. Now that could change. Who knows? When the world first race starts, we might end up stuck at boss number one for all I know. Uh, but for what I've seen so far and for what we've seen from all the other bosses, this looks like it potentially is going to be a very easy raid and then maybe Queen Ashara on Mythic is just going to be obscene. I hope that doesn't happen, but it kind of looks like it might go that way. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Mythic Eternal Palace. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.